Hello, hello, Dr. Jessica here with some nutritional components to returning back to school. Um, I will be honest with you, me personally, the part I hated the most about my kids going into um, traditional school systems was food and lunch. And um, this is where it's hard because there's personal preferences and then there's allergies. And this is the leap that a lot of people don't understand and you might have a little bit of a battle with your school systems is because if my kids ate wheat, they got super sick. Now, technically that was an allergy in my opinion, but not in their opinion, right? Because um, they didn't concern themselves with diarrhea or throwing up as being um, correlated to their wheat use. And so it got to be every year I would have to go in and say, look, you're gonna have behavioral issues, you're gonna have illnesses, you're gonna have um, you know, runs to the bathroom, you're gonna have accidents if my child is allowed to eat wheat products in your classroom. Um, and then I just got to the point where I just kinda had some blanket um, printouts on sugar and how the addition of food additives and sugar actually decreased test scores, decreased behavior. Um, and these were things that that finally got through to some of the teachers because of course their income is dependent upon their kids' test scores. And so offered alternate ways of uh, rewarding children other than Skittles and food and M&Ms, which is just not the direction we need to see our education going. And so then it's always fascinating to me that, you know, who they, they start establishing policies, which granted, people that are anaphylactic to peanut, that policy needs to be um, in place. But then are all nuts a problem? For some people, yes, some people no. So those are gonna be things you're gonna kinda have to navigate as we start to develop what is a proper lunch. And how much time do you have to donate to your kid's classroom? I know some moms um, have some extra time, so they're like, hey, let me know whenever there's things and I can bring in snacks and I can bring in treats and then they just chose to make those snacks and treats always healthy um, that is another big thing is could we just put a kibosh on parties that contain food and then that way we don't have to worry about anything being brought in we don't have to worry about peanuts or um, nuts or or wheat any of those things um, and sometimes just being a consistent force that is showing research after research to your school system to your teacher can start to make a difference especially if you offer them an alternative or a solution um, and that's just what we ended up having to do with our kids' school is we always had treats and solutions there in place um, so that they had something other than what was being offered to them. School lunches are kind of a bugger too because um, my kids can't eat any of them. So being able to come up with ideas for lunch that was new and fresh and not always the same thing. Um, Pinterest is where I found a lot of my, um, a lot of my recipes and I just did Pinterest lunches, paleo lunches, AIP lunches, um, lunches on the go, and just pulled different um, kind of ideas from that. A lot of times when I'm having to really rethink how we're gonna eat, I will pull out a three ring binder and I will just print off 50 recipes. I'll go ahead and spend an hour, I'll search and I'll pull off all the recipes and then I'll stick them all in that binder and then we'll just make them. And you know what? I let the kids rate them. They're either great or they were horrible. And then I rate it. Was it easy to make? Was it horrible to make? And then if they're gone, if they're bad, they're just gone, right? Um, most people only know how to cook about 10 meals. So if you can get your repertoire a little bit bigger um, and have 10 lunch meals and 10 dinner meals, you're doing significantly better than most everybody else out there is. So that's the thing is, is spend a little bit of extra time to prepare for the school lunches. Um, go ahead and, and spend a little bit of extra money on getting the recyclable, reusable lunch tins. Um, we got the stainless steel ones that kind of clamp like camping things, but it kept everything in sections. And so it's a little bit wider and didn't quite fit into lunch boxes as easy as the other things did, but it fit into backpacks, so it, it was good. So time to think out of the box when it comes to lunches for your kids and then also what will they eat and then also being firm and that is a hard one sometimes for some moms and some personalities that really are people pleasers and making sure that the moment you pick them up you have a protein snack for them and I think if you do that have that protein snack 
the moment they sit in the car, the moment they get off that bus, the moment you see them, then a lot of times that will regulate that blood sugar and you will see that mood regulate back out and you won't be dealing with a grumpy whatever year old that you've got on your hands. So I hope these have been helpful, just some tidbits to kind of get you going and um, don't be afraid to start searching. Pinterest rocks. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.